Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Shreya Savage. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 9th of June. Monsoon rains paralyze India's financial capital, Mumbai. Red alert issued. US will maintain its diplomatic presence in Afghanistan, says Secretary Blinken. And Nepal resumes COVID-19 vaccination campaign with doses given by China. And now for all the details. Heavy rains due to early onset of monsoon disrupted normal life in India's financial capital Mumbai on Wednesday, adding to woes of residents already reeling under the intense second wave of COVID-19 pandemic. The weather department issued red alert for the city for Wednesday and said heavy to very heavy rainfall was likely to continue for the next four days. Water logging triggered by heavy monsoon rains in India's financial capital of Mumbai added to the woes of residents already reeling under the intense second wave of COVID-19 pandemic on Wednesday. Rains in Mumbai crippled normal life, clogged drains, waterlogged streets and railway lines, making it difficult for people to commute, while coronavirus restrictions have been partially lifted in the city. A flood-like situation was created as residents were seen wading through thigh-high waters to reach their destinations. IMD, the India Meteorological Department, issued a red alert for the city for Wednesday and said, heavy to very heavy rainfall was likely to continue for the next four days. बहुत ज़्यादा तकलीफ परेशानी हो रही है हर जगह पानी भर रहा है और बहुत तकलीफ हो रही है मैं अभी चंबू जा रहा हूँ चंबू में पता नहीं कितना पानी होगा जाके देखना चाहता हूँ कितने ऑर्डर मैं ऑर्डर मार पाता ये नहीं आज हर जगह पानी पानी है जो लोग घर पे वो लोग घर पे रहे कोई भी जरूरी काम वो triggering the planting of crops such as rice, soybeans and cotton. But excessive rainfalls cause problems like floods and landslides. Mumbai has so far logged over 712,329 COVID-19 cases, while India's cases tally reached 29.1 million on Wednesday with 353,528 deaths. In news from Pakistan, the death toll in the terrible Khotki train tragedy in southern Pakistan climbed to 65 on Tuesday with more than 100 people injured. The latest accident to highlight a broken railway system that dates back to the 19th century. A local resident who lives close to the railway track described the scene of the incident where he heard people screaming for help. Train services resumed in Ghotki district of Pakistan's Sindh province on Tuesday, a day after a train smashed into derailed carriages of another, killing 65 people. The latest accident to highlight a broken railway system that dates back to the 19th century. A local teacher, Ali Nawaz, who lives close to the railway track and had been said he heard the night before a loud explosion and people screaming, get us out. He rushed to the scene and witnessed rangers and army soldiers pulling bodies from under the engine of one of the trains. Rescue officials working on the track said 17 coaches and the engine of one of the trains had been removed from the track with service resuming to both lines of the track. देखा तो गाड़ी में एक्सीडेंट हो गया है तो चिखे का आवाज आ रहा था जोर आदमी कर रहे थे निकालो निकालो और पानी ले आओ हम भागे हैं इसी टाइम उठे हैं बच्चों को उठाया पाड़े वालों को उठाया है भाई चलो ये गाड़ी का एक्सीडेंट हो गया है हम ले गए कूलर ले गए पानी जो हुआ है नेस ले ले गए और टेन ले गए बोतलें ले गए पानी पिलाया जो जख्मी था उन्हों को हमने अबोड़ो हॉस्पिटल पहुँचाया Accidents on the decaying rail system are common. 
Successive governments in Pakistan have for years been trying to secure funds to expand and modernize its dilapidated rail infrastructure, including a planned new rail track called ML1 as part of China's Belt and Road Initiative of Energy and Infrastructure projects. But the project is facing delays due to lack of financial close of the project. Moving on, scores of students held a protest recently in Pakistan-administered Kashmir against a government plan to hold their examinations amid a raging fresh wave of COVID-19 in the illegally occupied region. The protesting students demanded cancellation of the exams and blamed the authorities were playing with their lives. Scores of students in Pakistan-administered Kashmir held a protest recently against a government plan to hold their examinations amid a raging fresh wave of coronavirus in the illegally occupied region. The protesting students demanded cancellation of the exams for fear of rising infections and said if this cannot be done, the exam should be conducted online as their classes have been held online for the past one year due to the pandemic. They blamed the authorities are playing with their lives. Pakistan administered Kashmir has reported 19,566 confirmed cases of coronavirus with 558 deaths so far. This comes as health authorities have already raised concerns over conducting polls in the region over concerns that it will lead to further spread of potentially deadly virus. In news from Afghanistan, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has said that the U.S. is only withdrawing its troops from Afghanistan but is determined to maintain a strong diplomatic presence to extend economic and humanitarian support. His remarks came as the withdrawal of the international troops from Afghanistan has stoked fears of a renewed civil war in the country. The United States is only withdrawing its troops from Afghanistan and is determined to maintain a strong diplomatic presence there to extend economic and humanitarian support, Anthony Blinken, the U.S. Secretary of State, has said. Blinken told members of the House Appropriations Committee during a congressional hearing on Tuesday that the U.S. is in the process of withdrawing all its troops from Afghanistan by September. However, a strong embassy will remain in place. He said efforts are going on to see if the Afghan government and the Taliban can come to a peaceful accommodation to end the conflict. Um, even as we're withdrawing our forces, we are not withdrawing from Afghanistan. We will, uh, we're determined to sustain a strong uh, embassy presence, uh, programs to support Afghanistan, its people and its government, uh, economic uh, development, uh, humanitarian, the security forces. All of that uh, will remain. Meanwhile, U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan confirmed on Tuesday that U.S. has had constructive discussions in the military intelligence and diplomatic channels with Pakistan on terrorism emanating from Afghanistan and the Afghan peace process. However, he refrained from giving specifics of the discussions. This comes after reports surfaced that U.S. has been in talks with Pakistan for bases in the region to continue its counter-terrorism operations in Afghanistan post-withdrawal of the troops. However, Pakistan has refused to host U.S. drone bases on its soil. Maldives Foreign Minister Abdullah Shahid has been elected as the next president of the 76th United Nations General Assembly, garnering 143 votes out of the 191 ballots cast. Shahid pledged to push for equal access to coronavirus vaccines, a stronger and cleaner economic recovery and stepped up efforts to tackle climate change. The Maldives Foreign Minister Abdullah Shahid was on Monday elected as the new President of the United Nations General Assembly UNGA, winning a three-fourth majority against contender Afghanistan's former Foreign Minister Zalmi Rasol. Shahid garnered 143 votes, 48 against and no abstentions out of the 191 votes pooled. This is the first time the Maldives will be occupying the office of the President of the UNGA. In his victory speech, Shahid referred to his upcoming term as Presidency of Hope. 
The Maldivian minister said his immediate priority will be recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic and working to ensure vaccine equity to restore hope from a year characterized by disease, despair and devastation. We approach the 76th session in challenging times. Disease, despair and devastation have characterized the past year. Inequality, injustice and instability have increased. The environment, the ocean, our planet is suffering. But we need to get moving again, rebuild communities, rescue the planet, recover economies. Above all, restore hope. The election to the UNGA presidential post is held on an annual basis rotated amongst various regional groupings. The 76th UNGA session 2021-22 was the turn of the Asia-Pacific group. Moving on to news from Nepal. The inoculation drive in Nepal resumed on Tuesday after it received 1 million shots of China-developed untonated Verocell vaccines last week. The vaccination drive was stalled for several months due to shortage of COVID-19 vaccine. Nepal resumed its stalled coronavirus vaccination campaign on Tuesday as 1 million doses arrived from China last week. The Himalayan nation had earlier made international pleas for help with the shortage of doses. The vaccination drive, which was stalled for months due to shortage of vaccines, saw people gathering at different vaccination centres to get a dose of China-developed and donated Verocell vaccines. Senior citizens between 60 to 64 years queued up in vaccination centres around Kathmandu Valley and all seven provinces of the Himalayan nation to receive the shot. Though Nepal has started using the China-made Verocell to inoculate senior citizens, people are not yet sure whether they will get a second or the final complete booster dose. <laughs> Nepal started the inoculation drive in January with Covishield vaccines after it received 1 million doses on a grant basis from India. Later in the month, Nepal ordered additional 2 million doses of vaccines on a commercial basis but got delivery of half of it. With the onset of the second wave of infection in India and difficulty in procuring vaccines, Nepal halted the inoculation drive. As of Wednesday, Nepal reported 595,364 COVID-19 cases and 8,098 deaths. Farmers in India's Jammu and Kashmir have started the pruning of mulberry trees to boost cocoon production. Mulberry pruning is important for good quality leaves, which affects the quality of silk produced by silkworms. After lockdown restrictions were eased in India's Jammu and Kashmir, pruning operations of mulberry trees are currently going on in order to boost cocoon production in the valley. The mulberry plants are pruned by workers following all COVID guidelines. This pruning operation at Srinagar's Mirgun Sericulture Nursery is in full swing under the supervision of experts of the Jammu and Kashmir Sericulture Department. Pruning is integral to boosting the cocoon production as it makes the trees healthy as well as increase the number of leaves used for rearing silk worms that make cocoons. This is the first round of rearing and in July another round of rearing will be done 
which will help grow a second crop. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.